So uh, this script is referenced. So as soon as I move it, we start getting arcs in 3D space. And I can even move it in different amounts in different places. So now we have really, really quite complicated arcs here in 3D space. Uh, In fact, what, what I could do is I could also show the by R component, which actually would be something that you cannot do in Rhino, which is quite interesting. And we can make 3D curves from by R components based on spatial base curves. Does that sound like a good idea? We, we still have some time, so that, that we can actually take a, a quarter of an hour to do this. OK. OK, good. Uh, Almost all of this is no longer needed. Uh, we'll, we'll change it and we'll make, make a new file from scratch. So delete and delete this curve. What we'll do is we'll create arcs from this curve to this curve. Right, so we'll pick a bunch of points on this curve and here. And we will create arcs that are vertical at both endpoints. And as long as these two, two curves are planar in the same plane, that'll work fine for one arc, because an arc is then always have a circle, and it's always vertical at the endpoints. But as soon as these two curves start to move in 3D, this constraint is no longer possible to enforce on single arc segments. But we can do it on a bi-arc. Uh, a bi-arc is something which has a start point, an end point, a start tangent, on a, an end tangent, and then it creates two arc segments, which are tangent in the middle and tangent with the end constraints. So this is a single bi arc curve. Okay. Uh, divide both curves as before. Divide component. Make sure it knows which curve it's supposed to divide. Uh, copy paste, pick different curve, and create a slider that allows us to control division counts. Okay. So now we have start points for by arcs and end points for by arcs. We'll need to supply the actual tension vectors as well, because a by arc, if I look in the curve primitive, by our component, actually has five inputs. Very complicated. Start point, start tangent vector, end point, end tangent vector, and a ratio which we can play with later. So start point and end point, they're easy. I know those two. However, start tangent is a vector that's going straight up, right? We have we want to have the vertical direction here. Uh, Vector math and points and planes are all in the vector tab. And there are three default vectors, unit x, unit y, and unit z, which point respectively along the world x axis, y axis, and z axis. So I'll create a unit z vector, which becomes my start tangent. And I still have to supply my end tangent as well. So uh, let's plug z into there as well and see it fail. Yes. So it's going straight up, but the end tangent should point straight down, just to make sure that the arc actually hits, comes down at this, this angle. So instead of having a, a vector which is pointing straight up, I'll have to invert this vector, switch it around, flip it around. So reverse component takes a vector and flips direction. So now I have actually a vector which is pointing down. In fact, in a tooltip, you can see that it's 0, 0, comma, minus 1. So x and y are 0, and z is minus 1, meaning it points straight down. So far, because both curves are horizontal and coplanar, these are just perfect semicircles. But as soon as I move, sorry, one of these curves up, or even better yet, move bits of it up, we can no longer have 
single arcs, which are which start here, end there, and are vertical in both places. So now we have bi arcs. And you can even see that the bi arc, arc component actually draws little arrows telling you where one arc stops and the next arc starts. But this is quite a complicated curve setup, actually. And ultimately, we can even change the ratio of these arcs. Uh, the ratio is a number between 0 and 1 that allows to, to, to control where these two, these two arcs meet. But if it's 0, it starts almost there. And 1, it ends almost there. And in between, we can sort of blend between those two states. And 0 0.5 is the default, which typically gives you know, the best result. So that's your bi arcs. OK. Uh, colors is going a bit far, but if there's time, I can do it quickly. Uh, the bi arc component outputs three values it outputs the first arc as an actual arc segment, the second arc, and the curve which joins those both, both those arcs. So for example, we could decide to loft all of those arcs from here to the end, right? So loft allows us to create from a bunch of curved sections. Actually, this, this is sort of interesting, because a loft operates not, not on one number or, or one value, but on a list of values, right? When you loft something, you have to supply at least two curves. So this input here actually has curves as list written in it, which means that it will operate on a whole list of curves in one go. Uh, the O are loft options, which are which you can change through the menu as well if it's closed or blah blah blah, blah normal, loose, tight, that stuff. So all our arcs, and now we have one lofted surface here, and we can also loft the surface to the second arcs, and we have two. Loftwood surfaces. Uh, I chose to do this rather than creating a single surface out of the joint curves, because Rhino loft might introduce a lot of complexity if it's a joint curve. Uh, it might not. It might. It, I'm, I'm never sure until I try. So if I if I hide these two, yeah, you can see that actually there's lots of of uh, outer curves here. So th this surface is, is a lot more complicated than these two surfaces work together. That's one surface, other surface, and I can join those, of course, into a, a single poly surface. I can uh, run a, a uh, brep join. Instantly, the word brep in Grasshopper is the same as a trimmed surface or a poly surface. Brep stands for boundary representation, B rep, and it is basically any surface or collection of surfaces which have bits of them cut off. So if you can't find a certain uh, component and you're looking for the word surface, try again w uh, while looking for the word brep, and, and, and you might find it then. So I can take this one surface and hold shift to make sure that they both flow in there. Uh, I can hide these again, because now I've got double stuff going on. And now I have one brep, which is open. Right? It has one, it has holes everywhere, here at the bottom. But it is one brep consisting of two surfaces. 